Aloha mai kako. Mahalo for joining us for another Hello, Hello and Mele. I'm Kumu Maile, coming to you from the beautiful island of Moloka'i Nuiya Hina, which brings us to our subject for today, Hina, one of my most favorite aqua to talk about. But I can't forget to greet you first. Aloha kakahiaka means good morning to you. Aloha kakahiaka means good morning to you. Sing it with me three times. Aloha. Aloha. One more time. Aloha. 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 Well, let's see. We're going to be talking about Hina. And there's several books that I decided to share with you today. These two books that you see here. Now, before we go into it, let's talk about who Hina is. You'll hear her name a lot, but I, as I introduced myself, I come from the island of Moloka'i Nui Hina, which means Moloka'i Nui, which means great, plenty, big, grand. A, which means of Hina. So it's Moloka'i, the great child of Hina. Now Hina in her form, Hina I Kamalama, is believed to be the mother of Moloka'i and giving birth to this beautiful island that we live on. But throughout Polynesia, you'll find the Akua Hina being mentioned in many of their stories. And if you look at the screen, these are several different names that she's known by. And she's the same Akua, no matter where you go throughout Polynesia. So here in Hawaii, we refer to as Hina, and she has many different forms. And so her Hina becomes Hina Ikamalama, Hina Ikeahi, all different names. But Hina is the main name that we hold on to throughout Polynesia. Below that, you'll see the name Sina. So if you go to Samoa, you hear the stories of this Akua named Sina. So the H has been replaced with the S. And then if you go to the top of the screen, you'll see Hine. And throughout Aotearoa, they'll refer to as Hine. And she has different forms and names as well, just like Hawaii. And then the last one you see is Ina. In the Cook Islands, they call her Ina. So a lot of these stories throughout Polynesia tell the story of how Hine or Ina or Sina brought the coconut to these different areas of Polynesia. But the one that the form of Hina that I'm going to talk about today is Hina Ikamalama. Now she has three different names that I've learned that she's called by, and that's Hina Hanai Kamalama. Hina Ai Kamalama and Hina I Kamalama. They sound very, very similar. But I usually say Hina I Kamalama and it means Hina on the moon. So there's a very, very special story here that I wanted to share. It's one of my favorite books. And it's by Dietrich Perez. And he does all this beautiful block printing type of art. One of my favorite books here. Let's see. Look at these beautiful pictures. And I have some up on the screen as well. So the one I wanted to read to you here, let me find it. And it's like a compilation of all different stories of Hina and the different forms of Hina. And it's so beautifully done. And each page has a different story with a different picture to go with it. But this particular one I like to share with you because it has a lot to do with the next book I'm gonna read. Another form of Hina, was that of, God, of the goddess of food plants. This Hina was called Hina Puku Ai. Oh, Puku Ai, you know, Ai means to eat. Or Hina that gathers food. Sometimes this Hina was also called Hina Hele. Hina Puku Ai had a special calabash in which she kept food and food plants. She was lured away from her home by a chief and in the process spilled the contents of her calabash. These contents flew up to the heavens and became the moon and the stars. It is no coincidence that Hina of the food plants should also be associated with the moon and the stars. Hawaiians of old adhered to a strict lunar planting calendar for all their farming and the fishing as well. There are taro farmers to this day who will plant only at night and then give the new plants a particular tilt referred to as a Hina. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hina actually has said the word Hina has several different meanings. So Hina also means to tilt over like that. Hina Hina is the color, the color silver or gray, like the moon. 
So I always like to refer to Hina throughout our Mo'olelo's and the stories as this elemental force of the universe that causes incredible things to happen. Just like the Hina, the toppling over of a domino and watch the magic happen. So I hope you enjoyed that story. And like I said, this book is full of so many more stories about Hina. And I'm going to share one more after the book as well, but I'm just going to oral story tell, which is Ha'i Mo'olelo. I'm just going to say it with my own words. And I really wanted to emphasize how important it is to share our storytelling as a family and with friends. And not just storytelling from books, but sharing new stories, old stories. It's such an important part as who we are as humans and to develop, to develop ourselves, develop our brains and our understanding of the world. So storytelling. All right, let's get started with our puke. So I love the artwork in this puke and I use it for classroom teaching. And it's called Hina and the Sea of Stars. It's adapted and illustrated by Michael Nordenstrom. Isn't that a beautiful cover? Okay, let's begin. On nights when the moon is full, you can see Hina, the mother of the Hawaiian people, making kapwa. It is because of Hina that the moon and stars shine over the sleeping world below. And it is Hina's kapwa that encircles the earth and forms clouds. Hina has not always lived on the moon. She began her life in Kahiki Honua Kele, under the sea where she lived with her fish parents and many brothers and sisters. Her favorite brother was Kipapa. He promised their parents that he would protect Hina, but he was usually off swimming with his ocean friends. Oh, doesn't that look like fun? Look at that, all these beautiful ocean animals. This made his parents angry. And one day they banished him to the deepest part of the sea. Would he ever see his sister again? Wanting to leave something behind for Hina, Kipapa quickly filled a calabash with starfish and a crescent moon. This gift would remind Hina of his love. Then, sad and alone, he journeyed to the deepest part of the sea. His grandfather could not bear to see him in such misery, so he stirred up a mighty tempest. Dark waves surged, and with a mighty thunder, the sea floor cracked. Kipapa crawled through the opening until he reached the Hawaiian Islands. Kipapa was befriended by Chief Konikonia, who taught him the ways of the islanders. Konikonia also asked Kipapa to return to the sea and bring Hina back to live with them. Hina and Kipapa had a joyful reunion and Hina agreed to return with him. She took the calabash with her to remind her of the sea. However, when Hina left the sea, the stars and moon floated up into the evening sky. The stars drifted away until there were only faint points of light. The moon stayed close and grew larger, bathing the world with its light. When Chief Konikonia and Hina met, they fell in love. Together, they had 10 children. When these children grew, they had their own families. And eventually, there were as many people on the islands as there were stars in the heavens. With her children grown, Hina now longed to leave the earth and find a place where she could be alone. She made a colorful kappa and threw it high into the air. That kappa became the first rainbow. Hina climbed the rainbow until she reached the sun. But when she got there, she found it was too hot. 
So when night came, she lowered herself onto the moon. It was just right. And there she has remained ever since, making kappa and watching over her children from above. Now, at night, the whales in Waimea Bay wave at their friend in the moon and know that it will be another good night. Pipi Holoka'au. There you go, Hina and the Sea of Stars by Michael Nordenstrom. What a beautiful book, isn't it? And this is just one version of the story. Um, I've learned and read many different stories uh, or versions that give her a different name, different forms of Hina. Um, in the book, it said Hina Puku Ai. And then this particular story that talks about Ki, Ki Papa is Hina Hanai Kamalama. So there's different names, but surely Hina is a great Akua that tells us who we are and our ability to do amazing things. So now we're gonna go into the fun part and share some mele. But before we share some mele, I wanted to share a, a story about, or ha'i mo'olelo, which means oral storytelling, about a particular story of Hina here in Molokai. I did mention that Hina is the mother of Molokai and she has her ways of protecting her beautiful island child. And one of those ways is the story of Hina's ipu. And the name of this ipu, a lot of times when you learn these different stories, these um, ipu have names. Like the, the ipu that held the sea, the sea of stars, it's not mentioned in the book, but in the mo'olelo, the name of the ipu is, uh, what is it called? It's kipapa laulau, kipapa laulau. That's the name of the ipu in this story. I'm trying to remember all the different names of the ipu. Now the ipu that Hina uses to protect her island child is called wa wa honua aho. Try and repeat that after me. It's kind of hard to say, but I'll say it slow and then you repeat. Wa wa honua aho. Wa wa honua aho. All right, very good. So wa wa honua aho was her ipu that would hold three different winds. And these winds were said to have protect her island child whenever, whenever it was being threatened by outsiders or even those who dwelled on the island itself. If they threatened the ways and the peace of this island, then she would unleash these winds. So this is an ipu. This is an ipu. This is actually an ipu that my, um, my tutu, my grandmother left for me. She was a hula dancer and so am I. So this is very old. And this is my tutu's ipu. So this is a, a gourd. It's like a squash that grows on a vine. And then uh, we okay, we cut the top off of the vine and then we clean it out and we, we dry it. Or you can just clean it out after it dries, it's more easy. So it wasn't this kind of ipu. This is the kind that we use for water or for hula. But what they did was they cut the ipu and they used just the body part, right? And then they took another ipu and they cut it even smaller and used that as a lid. And they put two different ipu parts together to create one like this. See that? So there's the bottom ipu and then the top cover. So this is the kind, this is a good friend of mine, Kaipo Kikona made this for my ohana from Maui. And so this is the kind that Hina had and it had a lid where she would crack the lid. And so she would open the lid just a little bit to unleash the first wind, which was ili nahu. And that means like to bite at your skin. And it said that the ili nahu wind would uproot trees. If she was still upset, then she would open the lid halfway and release her second wind, which was ulu heva. Ulu means to grow, heva means the wrong. So you can just imagine what that was like. It's said to have blackened the Pailolo channel, which is the water that separates Maui and Molokai. And, and it would just be horrible wind that would just uproot and flatten everything. Now the last one was, was the one you really had to watch out for and it's called Luluku. And Luluku, is the wind that is said to have toppled chiefs. It would completely flatten homes, the whole aina, everything would be completely destroyed. So that is how Hina would protect her island child, Molokai Nui Hina. So we teach art camp here on Molokai to the youth. And so one year they got to learn a whole bunch of different mo'olelo about Hina and then they wrote a song. They wrote a song and they performed it for their parents at the end of the week. And I held it, I hold on to all of their work and we created, to, we created it together. So it was my husband, 
Hano Hano, it was me, and it was about 16 or 17 keiki, and we wrote this beautiful song. So I'm gonna invite Hano Hano to join us. Okay, I'll move over a little bit so there's room for him. Let's get cozy. And then we're gonna perform the song. So we're gonna put the How's words up on the screen. The words up on the screen oh. so you guys can join us. It's a super fun song. Hello, Hello, Hello. Thank you for joining us. Hello, and we haven't done this word, this song for a long time. So we have to practice this morning and I hope you guys can sing along with us. It's really fun. It moves slow, but I'm just going to read the words to you and then we can do it all together. So it says, Hina is Molokai's mama. And we talk about the different forms of Hina in here as well. So it says, Hina is Molokai's mama. This place we love, feel the mana. Malama, the planet. It's our kuleana to take care and love each other. She's the mother of Molokai. She puts the stars up in the sky. She makes rainbows on top of the moon that glows. Awesome and powerful. A guardian that's wonderful. Transform and shapeshift. She is real, not just a myth. Her first wind is Ili Nahu. A strong wind that blows right through you. Second wind is Uluheva. It makes the ocean big and changes the weather. Third wind is Luluku. She lets it go when she's all hoo hoo, which means angry. She gave birth to the reefs, made fish ponds so we can eat. Yeah. And those are two stories I didn't talk about yet today, but we will on another Hello Hello about her helping to create the first fish ponds here in Hawaii and also giving birth to the reefs. Oh, she's such an incredible Akua. So here's our mele. I hope you guys enjoy it and please sing along with us. We'll do it two times all the way through. Ready? Yep, makau kau. <laughs> Hina is Molokai's mama, the place we love, feel the mana. Malama, the planet, our kuleana, love and take care of each other. She's the mother of Molokai. She put the stars in the sky. She makes rainbows on top of the moon that glows. Awesome and powerful. Guardian that's wonderful. Transform and shape shift. She is real, not just a myth. Her first wind is Ili Nahu, a strong one that blows right through you. Her second wind is Ulu Heva, make the ocean big and change the weather. Her final wind is Luluku. She lets it go when she's all hoo hoo. She gave birth to the reefs, made fish pond so we can eat. Hey! She's the mother of Molokai. She put the stars in the sky. She makes rainbows on top of the moon that glows. Awesome and powerful. A guardian that's wonderful. Transform and shape shit. She is real, not just a myth. The first win is Ili Nahu, a strong one that blows right through you. The second win, Ulu Heva, make the ocean big and change the weather. The final win, Luluku, she lets it go when she's all hoo hoo. She gave birth to the reefs, made fish ponds so we can eat. Hina is Molokai's mama. The place we love, feel the mana. Malamara, planet, our kuleana. We take care and love each other. Yeah, all right. Woohoo, that was cool. Hina. That was cool. Molokai's mama. Thank you. You're the best mama. <laughs> that was fun. We haven't done that for a long time. All right. So now we're going to talk about some of the artwork um, that reflects the style that was used in this book. So last week we shared a story that was done in collage style and this is very very similar. It's collaging and so the examples that I gave to you was actually a, a lot like the last time but it's where you create a different type of background and you're not just using pieces that are all different colors put together but you're creating a background picture. So for instance you could paint, paint the whole ocean and the sky background and then cut out these painted pieces and glue them on top of the painted background. So I have instructions and some examples here on the screen of students' work from the past. 
And so the first step is paint a full sheet of paper for the background. Use a brush, sponge, or your fingers. So the example on the screen of the black and white and gray background, that was done with fingers. We did finger painting. And then we did the next step. Paint several sheets of paper with acrylics or watercolors and make each paper in different shades of the same color. And so you have all the colors you need to work with in your picture. Third step, or ecolu, says make one painted paper for every color you need. All right, and then eha, cut out the shapes to make the different parts of your picture. Ooh, and then in the last step, glue them onto another paper to create a whole picture. So you can see these example here is a they're cakey work. They're amazing. They did such a great job. So anybody can do this and you can use whatever you have at home, any type of paper, watercolor, acrylics, glue and scissors and paper. That's all you need. And you can have lots of fun. So, and if you want to be inspired by this puke, you can always go back and watch the recording of this and look at the pictures and be inspired by the beautiful artwork that Michael Nordenstrom did. Yeah. Now another famous artist that likes to use collaging that I absolutely love is Eric Carl. We're kind of familiar with Eric Carl, right? He did Brown, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and all these great books. But it's collaging. He does it all by collaging, cutting out pieces and then gluing them onto a piece of paper, like so. Very, very cool. So I hope you guys all are inspired by the stories of Hina today and the incredible things that she has done in our world and also to create beautiful art and music. So I'll see you next, hello, hello, and mele. And I also wanted to remind everybody to check out kahalewaka.com if you're interested in enrolling in the Kiki program, which explores oli, mo'olelo, olelo Hawaii, hula, and all of those wonderful things that make uh, the Hawaiian culture what it is. So until next time. Ahui ho, malama pono. Aui ho, malama pono. Sing it with me. Aui ho, e ne. Aui ho, e ne. Malama pono, e ne. Aui ho, malama pono.